Okay, so the very first lab for Geology 110 for the spring of 2022. This is online, live online, I should say. So I've come into the lab and pre-recorded this experiment. So the setup is as follows. We have 10 stations. All these 10 stations where we're going to conduct this experiment, 10 different samples we're going to actually perform, or wind up with 10 samples, all have the same conditions. They all have six millimeters of water in a glass beaker. The beakers are the identical brand size. Hot plates are all the same, same brand, all set at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Same environmental conditions, same room. And so everything is identically the same for each one of these 10 different experiments that we're gonna do. The only variant, the thing that is different is basically that the concentrations of ammonia phosphate which is NH4, H3PO4, vary. So some stations have only 140 milliliters, that's a volume of the ammonia phosphate, and other stations have 700 millimeters. And the way I actually work this out is I go progressively from the smaller with number one to the larger concentration at 700 milliliters at station number 10. So this is the experiment, and we have it set it up over here in the lab and hopefully when they lift restrictions, we can come and actually work in this lab. And so here are the 10 stations. So we have 10 different stations and what I'm doing is I'm assigning you just randomly picking people together and this is gonna be your station number one, so forth, station number two, all the way to number seven or 10. So here's the salt. It's a white salt. It's basically ammonia phosphate. They use this for a lot of things, but it grows really good crystals under the right conditions. So this is the smallest concentration. And as we go up the line, let's do stations number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The concentrations of the ammonia phosphate, the volume of it, increases. So we're increasing in volume. Until we get to station number 10, it has the largest volume at 700 milliliters of ammonia phosphate. So the procedure is going to be, and I'm gonna pause the camera for this because you don't sit here and wanna watch me stir 10 stations, so I'm gonna dump the ammonia phosphate in, I'm gonna stir it, I'm gonna have somebody come in and actually assist with that process. We're gonna slowly dump this ammonia phosphate in each one of these 10 stations. We're gonna completely dissolve it in warm water. So the temperature is basically set at 210 degrees Fahrenheit for each one of these stations. And we don't want the water to really boil. It will steam a little bit, but it's not really boiling to the point where there's bubbles forming up because boiling water really disturbs the process. I don't really know why, but I've certainly found it in the past that when the water boils, the crystals don't form. So, all the stations are identical. They're all set at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. They're the identical hot plate, identical beakers, same volume of water. The only thing that's gonna vary here is the amount of the ammonia phosphate salt. So once we stir these, we're gonna let them cool down, and then we're gonna pour the contents into a plastic cup. I'm gonna add some food coloring, just to make it interesting. But at this point, you as a class, you have to generate a hypothesis. So remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess that requires testing. This is the test. We're gonna actually gonna dissolve these different concentrations of ammonia phosphate in these beakers full of warm water. And then we're gonna allow these crystals to grow. And it's gonna take between eight to 10 weeks for these crystals to grow in these cups. And just to give you an idea of some crystals that we grew in past, throughout the coronavirus, 
here are some of these crystals and some of them are pretty neat I put some blue food coloring in it in this one so here's a nice little cluster of crystals here's another one They form nice little prisms. And then this one here, notice that the crystals are quite different. These are much larger. They're fewer and very large crystals. So you can see that there is a variation with respect to the size of the crystals. Food coloring really doesn't impact it. We put the equal amount of food coloring in. So here these are a lot more crystals, smaller in size. And you get an idea of the overall scale of these. They're sitting here on a table. And we grew the oils in the little cups. So, hypothesis. So the very first lecture, we went through the scientific method. Scientific method starts off with the first step being an observation. You observe something. So we are making an observation today here. The observation is, is that we have 10 stations. Everything is equal, except the thing that varies is the amount of ammonium phosphate. So the next step in the scientific method, step number two, is the problem statement. So our problem here is that we want to determine what different concentrations of ammonia phosphate will do with respect to crystal growth. Step number three is a hypothesis, educated guess that requires testing. So we're going to come up with a hypothesis here. And here are some ideas. So these aren't actually set in stone. I just wanted to give you some ideas. Um, these are hypotheses that students in the past have generated. Well, hypothesis number one, no crystals will grow. Well, you might look at that and say, well, wait a minute. You just showed us that crystals do grow. Well, what if there was an earthquake and all the containers spilled? So there's a possibility that no crystals will grow. Or something environmental condition were to occur, that these solutions could be contaminated with something. Now, hot passes number two. Larger concentrations of ammonia phosphate will grow more crystals or larger crystals. Few crystals, smaller crystals. And you could do the opposite. You could say that smaller concentrations might grow more crystals, larger crystals, few crystals, smaller crystals. Number three here, there will be a concentration that will grow the best crystal form. So if somebody really wants to take a gamble, our concentrations remember vary between 140 milliliters and 700. Somebody might come along and say, I think 450 is going to be the, the best solution for growing crystals. And so that's a hypothesis. Another hypothesis idea. Smaller concentrations will grow larger crystals. Many small, few and small one large crystal. So these are ideas for hypothesis generation. And you as a class have got to come up with these hypotheses. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the process. I got a friend coming in to help me stir all these. We're going to stir, we're going to put numbers on them. And then we're going to add food coloring after that cools down. So I'm not going to keep the camera rolling for that process because we'd be here. You'd be watching this video for a very long time. And I think you have better things to do than watch me stir ammonia phosphate. And so we'll, we will return when I'm done stirring the concentrations. Okay, so my friend Thomas and I have been stirring viciously. 
And what you're going to notice is that the solutions that have the highest concentration, so this is number 10, this has 650 milliliters. At the bottom, there's a base of precipitate. That's because there's just a high concentration and we couldn't dissolve it all, even though we stirred these things and we're still stirring. As I go down towards the lower concentrations, you're going to notice that those lower concentrations don't have any base to them. There's no precipitate forming at the bottom. So this is another thing we might want to look at when generating a hypothesis. Maybe this base will perform, or actually provide, a foundation for crystals to grow. And maybe the ones that don't have a precipitate or a base at the bottom won't grow as many crystals. That hypothesis is a possibility and it's entirely up to you. So just to let you know for this class, I kind of grouped you guys into groups. I went through the roster and I went ahead and assigned everybody a station one through ten. And so at the end of the semester, what we're going to do is our very last lab is we're going to test our hypothesis. We're going to see what the crystals look like. And as I stated earlier, it's going to take between eight to ten weeks for these crystals to grow. So after spring break, when we're on the second half of the semester, midway between that time, between the spring break and the end of the semester, this is when the crystals will probably be pretty much completed growing. And we're going to look at these at the very last lap. So that's another possibility. What we're going to do now is we're going to let these cool down. We're going to add some food coloring. Pour them into the little containers, which are numbered according to the card. So here we have the, uh, the sheet that goes with it. We'll number the container. We're going to pour it in these, add some food coloring. I wish I could ask you what your color preferences were, but since we haven't had a class yet, I'm actually doing this the week before class starts. Whatever color you get, that's what you get, you know? And that's just the way it'll be. So we'll be back in just a minute here after we allow these things to cool down and add some food coloring. All right, so at this point of the experiment, the solutions have cooled down and I have dumped them into the little cups. And this is where the water is going to evaporate. And over the next eight weeks to 10 weeks, depending on what the temperature in the room is, the water is going to evaporate and the crystals will grow. Now, again, some of these solutions, such as this one here that has to be 200 millimeters, there's no precipitate at the bottom. I did add food coloring to all of them except for two. And so I left food coloring out of two of the samples. This one at 350 milliliters has no food coloring in it. And also the largest concentration at the very end here at 700 milliliters actually 650. That's a mistake. So these solutions don't have food coloring, but again Notice this one with the highest concentration has a precipitate at the bottom. So I left these in the beaker so I could show that precipitate. When I pour it into the cup, it's not as obvious. Also, the solution here, number nine, with 600 milliliters, pretty good base to it. And as we go down to 500 milliliters, not as much of a base on this one and then the bases disappear. So there's two things we can look at. Does the precipitate at the bottom, is that gonna affect crystals? Maybe the precipitate at the bottom of the base will allow a platform for the crystals to grow on. Also food coloring. Is food coloring gonna impact crystal growth? So we have two solutions, and I kind of spaced these out. One at 350 millimeters, and then the largest concentration at 650 milliliters. These two solutions do not have any food coloring. And so this is another possibility of hypothesis. So at this point in the lab, it is time for you, the class, the students, to actually generate 
at least one hypothesis, maybe two, maybe three. And at the very last class of the semester in May, we are going to then test the hypothesis. We're going to actually look at the crystals and see what the result is. So we don't know what the result is. So at this point, through the scientific method, we've gone through the observation. We've observed the lab here, the different solutions, different concentrations. All other conditions are the same. The problem statement here is we want to grow good crystals. The hypothesis is what you're going to generate. This is the experiment. After the experiment, we go to the evaluation. That's the next step in the scientific method. And the evaluation will be simply to look at the crystals and ask the question, do these crystals and the outcome, does it support, does it help us accept our hypothesis, or do we wind up rejecting the hypothesis? And that's the evaluation. Once we determine if the hypothesis has been accepted or rejected, then we will have a theory. So theory at the end of the scientific method, and this is what we're going to generate, or actually we'll produce, or have a theory at the very last lab, very last class of this spring of 2022 semester.